Right, it's the start of 2023, and that means everyone's all about productivity and changing things and becoming a better version of yourself. So with that in mind, I'm going to show you four productivity apps for the Mac, which I could not live without. So, hands up, I'm a bit of a productivity nerd. There aren't many apps or techniques or life hacks that I haven't tried to help me get to the bottom of my to-do list every single day. Some of them work, some of them don't work, but the ones that do work I tend to stick with, and that's particularly the case when it comes to apps. And in 2022, I found four apps for the Mac, although one of them isn't technically a Mac app. I'll explain later why that's the case. But anyway, I found four apps that completely changed the game for me. Today, I'm gonna to show you those four apps, but before I do that, a very quick word on an app that isn't a productivity app, but which helped me massively last year and is the kind of glue that brought everything together. And that app is 1Password. They're not sponsoring this video at all, but I do earn affiliate revenue from them. So if you click the link in my description, firstly, you get 25% off your first year, which is fantastic, but I do get a little kickback from that. But the reason I keep mentioning 1Password is because I use it every single day. It holds all my passwords, my secure notes, a lot of the documentation that I don't want other people to see. My driving license details and loads of other stuff that I just want to keep away from prying eyes. Now without mentioning any names, there has been some issues in the password management sector for one particular provider. If you're using that system and you need to jump ship and go with something else, I highly recommend 1Password. So to save 25% off your first year of 1Password, click that link in the description. Right, the first app is Notion, and I would not want to work in Notion's marketing team because it's such a hard app to describe. Because Notion can be anything you want it to be. It can be a to-do list manager, it can be a full-on GTD system, you know, get things done system, it can be a CRM. But for me, Notion absolutely runs this business. Honestly, without Notion, you wouldn't be watching this video, my blog wouldn't be full of articles, it would just be, well, I wouldn't be here. And the reason for that is that all of the individual components of this business need to be interlinked. So blogs relate to videos, both of those relate to review units, and I need some way of linking them all together. And that's the great thing about Notion. It's this great big customizable database where you can create these links between the different areas of your business. And for someone like me who invests a lot of time in repurposing content, so a blog becomes a video, a video becomes a bunch of short form videos, keeping all of that stuff tracked in one app is just invaluable. Later this year, I will be launching my own template for Notion. So if you want to follow in my footsteps and create online content, I'll have something for you within the next few months. But in the meantime, the best recommendation I have for Notion for anyone who wants to give it a go is to just get the free tier, which is really generous. You don't have to pay for it at all, to be honest. I'm not affiliated with Notion. I do pay for it myself because I need some of the more advanced features. But if you're just getting started, just go for that free version and don't be overwhelmed by it. Perhaps just start by creating a to-do list and then add things into your Notion as you need it. So yeah, go and check it out. There's a reason lots and lots of YouTubers, people like myself, use Notion and talk about it all the time. It is brilliant. Next up, we have TickTick, which is the app that I use for to-do list management. Now, for many, many years, I used OmniFocus, which you may or may not have heard of. That was great, although it was a bit big for my needs. It had lots of stuff, lots of functionality that I just didn't use. So I went from OmniFocus to Things 3. Now, there's nothing wrong with Things 3 at all. In fact, it's a beautiful to-do list manager, but it only runs on Apple products. Now, for me, that was becoming an increasing issue because I was using Android phones more. I was occasionally delving into Windows, and I needed a to-do list manager that could come across all of those different platforms. And TickTick -tick can do that, and it's also recommended by MKBHD, who I do worship, to be honest. Now, there is one issue with TickTick, -tick, which is that it needs a bit of a visual overhaul. I mentioned a moment ago that Things 3 is a beautiful app. It really is. But that's just an aesthetics thing. And for me, TickTick -tick has that cross-device compatibility. It has a feature set which is pretty much identical to Things 3, if not a little bit deeper, and it just works. Now, I can't say much more about TickTick. -tick. It's a to-do list manager. You can't get that excited about those kinds of apps, but if you're looking for something which works across different platforms and has all the features you'd need without all of that really complex GTD stuff that you get within OmniFocus, check out TickTick. -tick. 
Next up, we have Spark 3, which is the email client that I use. So I don't use Apple Mail, mainly again because it doesn't work across different platforms. I've used Spark for years, but Spark 3 is quite a big update. And the key thing with it, for someone like me, who is admittedly a terrible email user, it completely transforms your approach to email. And what Spark 3 does brilliantly is it turns email management into a kind of productivity system. And the main kind of embodiment of this is the way they deal with archiving emails. So normally you just archive an email. In Spark 3, you tick it off as done. And that has the same net result. It puts that email into your archive folder. But there's just something about ticking that box, putting that little tick against each email that you've dealt with that makes it feel far more satisfying and more importantly, addictive. And stuff that is addictive, you'll keep doing. And the problem that I've had with email in the past is that I've done things like, you know, unreading emails. So I'll read an email and think, I can't respond to that now, I'll do it later. So I'll right click, do markers unread and come back to it. Now, nine times out of 10, maybe eight times out of 10, that works. But there's always those horrible instances where for some reason it gets marked as red again and then you miss it and you forget to respond to it. And I hate missing emails, I hate not responding to important emails. So one thing that Spark does brilliantly because of that tick box system is that it keeps my inbox very, very clean. You can also set emails aside for future reference if you want to, which takes them out of your inbox and puts them into a holding pen. And talking of holding pens, the other thing Spark 3 has is this kind of new sender holding pen at the top of the screen. So when you receive a new email from a completely unknown sender, you can choose to accept it or block it. And that block button is the most addictive button I use on a daily basis. You can also group emails by senders or by priority as well. Again, none of this stuff is groundbreaking. You get a lot of these features in other email clients, but there's just something about the way that Spark 3 does it. Right, the last app on my list is, well, it's an iPhone app. It's not actually a Mac app, but it makes this list for two reasons. One, it's my list, my rules. And two, it's because the app I'm about to show you I use all the time in conjunction with my Mac. So whether I'm writing or just doing something on my Mac where I really need to lock into what I'm doing, I could not live without Brain FM. And Brain FM is an app that sits on your iPhone. I can show you it here. Looks like this. Basically, you put a pair of noise cancelling headphones on your head and it pipes music into your ears that makes you more productive. I'm not a scientist, so I'm not the best person to explain how this works, but it works. And it uses a patented neuromodulation process. I always have to read that because I don't know what it means. But basically, the music that this plays, firstly, it has no lyrics. Secondly, you won't recognize it. And thirdly, it has this kind of wavy kind of modulation that goes in and out of existence, which I think locks into your brain's own modulating rhythms. Don't take that as red, that's probably a terrible explanation of it. But basically, it locks you into a workflow which means you can get loads of stuff done. And I've now reached a point where I can't do any meaningful work on my Mac without Brain FM playing. Full disclosure, I am a Brain FM affiliate, so if you click that link in the description, I do get a commission for that, but you also get 20% off. I'll leave a link above to my full review of Brain FM, but I know lots of people who have signed up as a result of that, and they're very happy. On the subject of new things to get your teeth stuck into this year, keep watching for a link to a video I made recently where I reveal seven things I want to see from Apple in 2023.